So we have this peculiar, what I call e-assessment paradox, which is that although high-stakes e-assessment is very widely used in professional and practical certification, take-up in education is low. And I put there a few of the, the areas or disciplines using um, high-stakes and electronic assessment, using electronic assessment for high-stakes purposes. Um, the aviation and defence industries, medicine and law, finance and insurance, construction and real estate, these are all um, areas where very sophisticated cognitive skills are required, where um, mastery of your subject is required. And the an e-assessment is widely used in all these professional disciplines for licensure and, and for, the, for, um, for, for practicing. So the, the, there's no sense, if you like, that e-assessments are second best, that it can't do as good a job. But nonetheless, take up in education remains very low. Um, despite what are, are the very considerable benefits of um, wide-scale de-assessment. I, I put a few down here. But there are, of course, a number of, of obstacles, and I think these are, are the things we need to look to to explain the slowness with which it's being taken up. Um, first of all, I think in technology, we're still really at the point of refining what precise e-assessment model it is that we want to take. And at the moment, much of the um, e-assessment is delivered on what I would call a sort of relatively... Um, first generation model of a lockdown test centre model. For example, all those professional qualifications I talked about, they generally get taken in an exam centre, which you may have to travel 10, 15, 100, um, 200 miles to. Um, it's not a very convenient, it's not a very user friendly thing. And in terms of that, um, that, that ambition for e-assessment of improving access. Actually, it doesn't improve access that much because it's all based on this lockdown test centre model. And we need to move, and we're beginning to move, to a fully internet-enabled model um, using students' own laptops in their own centres. But just to sort of give an idea of why this is so key, I've done a, a quick sort of planogram of what's in, involved um, in delivering an e-test. E um, so you have there the various component parts, Cambridge, the cloud, the centre and the candidates. Um, Cambridge develops the test, it then publishes it to the cloud, it then gets downloaded from the cloud to the centre, the centre then has to download it onto all the candidates' machines, all the candidates download it onto their machines, they sit the test, the responses are then returned up to the centre, they then go back to the cloud, and they then go back to Cambridge. So although um, conceptually the technology exists already, although conceptually you can see that the, the um, technical flows are quite straightforward to get a grip of, actually the tra challenge of delivering that on the ground when you've got um, tens, even hundreds of thousands of candidates taking an exam at the same time, it's very significant, and I think we're still some way off of achieving that. I think there are some other obstacles to take up as well that it's worth talking about. Um, some of these are what I call managerial. And then I think also, very importantly, um, we need to work out what the student's position is all <clears throat> on all of this. And the sh shift to e assessment, I think, has got to be platform neutral um, for students at the worst. Um, at the best, it's got to be a positive thing. And I think there's also something more profound about the idea of the gathered field. It's all very well saying that people should be ready to take tests on demand, that they should be able to do them whenever they want. But actually, the gathered field, the concept that you've got everybody taking the same test at the same time, I think it's very fundamental to our concept of fairness, particularly with high stakes examinations, where the results of those examinations, um, where, where people depend for, for the results of those, on the results of those examinations for things like university places or jobs. And I think that concept of a gathered field is absolutely fundamental. And I think there's also a very profound issue, which I haven't really found anybody dealing with satisfactorily, that the whole question of the, the digital natives as against the socially excluded. Um, and it's very important that we don't move into an environment where insufficient ICT skills are regarded as a, as a proxy for cognitive or subject knowledge deficit. That's not what it's about. You're not testing people's ICT skills. You're testing, testing their subject knowledge. Um, I think also we have to deal with the fact that at the heart of this debate there are sort of issues about um, people's relationship to, to, to how they absorb knowledge and, and the particular issue here is to do with books and reading and whether that's still the primary means of absorbing knowledge or whether actually now we, we, we go straight to the internet. My view of, to, of what is coming next is that we're going to see a slow migration to e-assessment in high-stake exams. Um, I think we've got the blended assessment model to exploit clear e-benefits. Um, this means that we can supplement high-stakes exams with observational evidence 
um, portfolios and project work. So we come up with a sort of mixed hybrid approach that combines the best of both um, methods. And I think also we have to recognise that um, there is an evolutionary element here. Different subjects are going to migrate at different, different paces. So in conclusion, it's no good having the technology right if we haven't got the um, ideology and the philosophy of it right, and we won't bring, bring people along with us. And I think only switch where high-stake e-assessment is more effective than pen and paper, and that's why I think, in a sense, Warwick, Warwick Mansell was right. I do think in 10 to 15 years, in subjects where it's easier and better and more appropriate and more valid to um, use e-assessment, we'll have done so, but that will not be all subjects. Um, and then again, I think, let's be ambitious but selective. Let's be focused. We're not looking for a big bang here. Mm -hmm.